Welcome to the Kings and Priests Podcast. I'm your host, Serge DeRosa, and I hope you find this episode interesting. Let's jump into it. Matthew 6.33 says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if you ask me, if Jesus says you should seek this first, I would think that that is a pretty important thing. So today we're going to set out to describe what is the kingdom of God. You know, I've listened to many sermons throughout the years that set out to describe what the kingdom of God is. But what I've come to realize is many of us aim to describe what the kingdom of God is, but instead we're describing what is within the kingdom or how to function within the kingdom. And that's hugely important. We need to know these things. But at the same time, we need to know exactly what the kingdom of God is and what that means. And today we're going to set out to do just that and explain it in a simple and easy to understand way. And also, we're going to discuss why it's important to know what the kingdom of God is and how to allow God to manifest his kingdom on this earth through us. So right off the bat, let's do a word study. As you can see, kingdom is a two-part word, king, dumb. And we all know that the Bible is written in both Hebrew and Greek. And the cool thing about the word kingdom is that it means the same thing in both the Hebrew and the Greek. And in both languages, kingdom is defined in two equally important aspects, domain and dominion, or you can say territory and kingship. So in other words, when we look at the word kingdom, the first part of the word being king, it implies kingship or rulership or dominion. And the second part of the word dumb implies domain or territory. So in other words, kingdom is defined as kingship over a king's territory or dominion over a king's domain. You know, one could say all day long that they're a king. But if they have no domain or territory to be king over, then are they really? And in the same way, a king can have territory, but if he does not implement his kingship or his dominion within his territory, he's not taking his place of kingship or dominion as he should. Every king must have a territory in which he has dominion over. So again, to make this real simple, Kingdom can be simply defined as the king's domain in which he has dominion. So let's go a little bit deeper. What is God's territory? Genesis 1-1 says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we see here that God created his territory. He created both the heavens and the earth. He created them. Therefore, it belongs to him. Deuteronomy 10, 14 says this, Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens and the earth and all that is in it. Psalms 1, 15, 16 says this, The heavens belong to our God. They are his alone. So again, because God created the heavens and the earth, they belong to him. They are his territory. Psalms 24, 1 and 2, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And just to make this plain and simple, a king's kingdom is his territory. And we see here that God's territory is both the heavens and the earth. It says they belong to him. Therefore, God's kingdom encompasses both the heavens and the earth. What you're going to start seeing is that this just keeps getting better and better, and better. Look at Psalms 115, 16. It says, the heavens belong to our God. They are his alone, but he has given us the earth and put us in charge. So God put man in charge of the earth, and it started with Adam. When you go to Genesis 126, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, 
Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. How cool is that? God gave dominion of his domain, the earth, over to man, starting with Adam. Psalms 8, 6 says this, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. What a huge moment that God would entrust his kingdom, his territory, the earth, to mankind. But look what happened in Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Starting with Adam, through the ages, mankind has given this dominion that God gave him over to darkness. Instead of reigning on this earth from a place of righteousness with the Father, man began to give his dominion over to darkness. And darkness began to have dominion on this earth more and more and more. To the point that that darkness turned around and it started enslaving mankind. The darkness started to take a domain that wasn't even its own. But God started sending his prophets, telling us of a hope that would soon come to set mankind free. And you'll see it in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You hear that? When the son is given, when Jesus is born, and the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah is prophesying of Jesus being born to this earth and bringing the government on his shoulders, or in other words, the dominion of God back to this earth. Look what Matthew 4.17 says. It's talking about Jesus starting his ministry. And it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What Jesus is saying is, I'm bringing God's dominion back to this earth. And I'm turning the tables on darkness. Colossians 1.13. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. You see that? He has delivered us from the territory of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. He took us out of the hand of darkness, the dominion and the domain of darkness, and he placed us back in the domain and the dominion of God. Not only did Jesus bring God's dominion and claim back God's territory, but he also delivered us from that dominion of darkness, from that dominion of darkness that was enslaving mankind. And he brought us into the kingdom of Jesus. And we are now under God's dominion, not the dominion of darkness. And it keeps getting better and better and better. Jesus not only took us out of that darkness, but he defeats that darkness and he takes the dominion and the power away from it. Daniel 7, 26 prophesied of this moment. It says the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. This is a prophecy of what would take place when Jesus showed up. Jesus was destroying the dominion of darkness forever. John 12, 31 now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. This is in Jesus' time. It's not talking about a future reference. Jesus said, now that's happening. In Colossians 2.15 it says, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. You see, we had become enslaved and oppressed by the very ones we let have dominion, that darkness. But Jesus came and he set things back in order. Jesus stripped the power from darkness, defeated it, 
And he took back domain that belonged to God to begin with. And he brought back God's dominion within his domain. He brought back God's power. He brought back God's rule on this earth, which was God's territory to begin with. And it goes even a step further. Jesus gives that power to the saints of God to reign and rule with him in all righteousness. In Daniel 7, 27, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the most high God. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Again, this is a prophecy of what would take place when Jesus came on the scene. You see, when God created Adam, he gave dominion to all mankind. But in this new covenant that we are now in, he doesn't give that dominion back to all mankind. He gives it back to the saints of God. And that's why you'll hear me many times say that the earth belongs to the righteous, not to the unrighteous, to the righteous. Proverbs 10.30, the righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. I'm telling you, the earth belongs to the righteous. Luke 12.32, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And again, what is the kingdom? It is God's dominion over his domain. And what is his domain? Domain is territory. And God created the heavens and the earth. Therefore, his territory is both the heavens and the earth. And we read in Daniel 7, 27, that that kingdom would be given to the saints of God. The earth, God's territory, will be given to the saints of God. And we read here in Luke 12, 32, that it is God's good pleasure to give us that kingdom. We are literally in a place right now where we share in God's kingdom, that we partner with God right now to bring God's dominion back to his domain, this earth. James 2, 5, it says, listen, my beloved, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? This is some good news right here. Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's talking about dominion. It's talking about reign and rulership. He has handed over dominion to the saints. He gave us the keys. And from that moment forward, we were given the power, we were given the right, we were given the anointing, we were given the dominion to implement God's rulership on this earth. Luke ten nineteen, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Think about that. That's how much God has given you the kingdom, where you have all authority and all power and nothing shall hurt you. Jesus defeated and he stripped the power and the authority away from Satan, away from his evil minions and away from all darkness. And now we have been given all authority on this earth to implement God's rule and reign. And look at this, Luke 17, 20. Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come? And he answered them, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. You see, God's territory, the heavens and the earth were already established. It was already his. So what are they talking about in this scripture? They're talking about the dominion of God within his territory. They're like, Jesus, when are you going to take up your throne? He said, you don't get it. The authority, 
the dominion, the rulership of God comes from within us. The dominion of God is manifested on this earth through us. That's where it starts. We are now the temple of the living God and his spirit resides within us. Therefore, we rule, we reign, we have dominion from that place. And we do so from a place of righteousness and we do so from a place of his dominion. You'll see in Revelations 5.10 that because he has given us his kingdom, his territory and his dominion, he therefore makes us kings. As it says, Jesus has made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. It's not just a spiritual reign, it's a physical reign also on the earth. Like I said, the earth belongs to the righteous. We have inherited it. He has given it to us. We are co-heirs with him, and we are to exercise our kingship on it. Psalms 37, 9, for the evildoers shall be cut off, and those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Romans 4, 13, and 16, I love this one. Clearly, God's promise is to give the whole earth to Abraham. Did you hear that? The entire earth to Abraham and his descendants was not based on obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. And jump over to verse 16, still speaking about how God has promised the entire earth to Abraham and his descendants, which that's who we are. The Bible says we are Abraham's descendants. Those who are in Christ are Abraham's descendants. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it. To receive what? The inheritance of the whole earth. Luke 12, 32. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. And again, 727. I want to read this one more time. Then the kingdom and the dominion. You hear that? Then the kingdom, the territory, and the dominion, the rulership, and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High God. That's you. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You hear that? It will last forever. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. So what I've just laid out is that you are a king appointed by King Jesus to rule, to reign, and to have dominion on this earth. The earth is our kingdom. It's our domain. It's our territory, which was given to us by God. And we are to exercise our kingship or our dominion upon it. Think about the Israelites. The Israelites were set free out of captivity and oppression. Doesn't that sound like what Jesus did for us? He set us free from that hand of darkness, from that hand of oppression, from that hand of slavery. And the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert. What was going on there? We see that they were learning God's ways and God's heart. God was capturing their heart as they were capturing his. And again, that's just like us and Jesus. We get saved from that hand of oppression and slavery. We get set free. And then we start learning of the Father. We start learning his ways and he starts capturing our hearts. And then the Israelites were told by God, go into this land that I give you. He gave them a land that was theirs before they even stepped into it. How could he do that? Because it was his to begin with. It was God's territory. And he says, I'm giving you this territory. And that's what he does to us in the whole earth. He says, I give you this territory. And he told the Israelites, go and possess it. In other words, he said, go and take dominion over it. Implement my ways and my dominion upon my territory. I want to partner with you to do this. Let's make this territory the best it can be. Let's bring my heart, my desire, and my intent for this land 
to thrive and to be in abundance. That's what he did with us. He set us free. We go through a season where we learn his ways and his heart. And then he says, listen, I give you the world. Now go and implement my ways and my heart upon it. Jeremiah 31, 33 says this. I will be their God and they will be my people. He's talking about a place of intimate exchange. It's a place of righteousness. It's God passionately being after us and we passionately being after God. Again, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's that place of intimate exchange and his righteousness. You can't have kingdom and kingship without his righteousness because we are to rule and to reign from a place of God's heart. And that's why you see this scripture putting them both together. It says that Jesus is the king of kings. We are the little K kings and he is the king. We get our instructions on how to implement God's dominion upon his domain, which is the earth, by listening to the king. And Jesus shows us exactly how to do this. He says, I only do what I see the father do. And I only say what I hear the father say. What's he saying? He said, I only implement my authority on this earth from a place of relationship with the father. That's where it starts. We're in a partnership. I'm not here to implement my dominion on this earth on my own. That's what mankind did for so long and we messed the earth up. But now we are ruling and we are reigning from a place of righteousness, from a place of God's heart, God's intent, and God's desire. We possess the earth from a place of righteousness. Again, Jesus came and he took the territory that belonged to God. He stripped the power and the dominion away from all darkness. And he gave that territory and that dominion to the saints of God, saying, go into all the world and implement my dominion upon my domain, the earth. And as we go, as Mark 16 says, he works with us, confirming his word through miraculous signs and wonders. Our kingship on this earth is carried out by listening to the King of Kings, Jesus. This is ruling and reigning and having dominion from a place of righteousness. This is what it means to function as a king and a priest on this earth. But what does this look like practically? You know, I recently heard a minister say that God had called him into the secular music industry. Basically, what he was saying is, There's an industry that is full of darkness and it has no right to be there. I've stripped it of its power and I've stripped it of its authority. But I need you as my son. I need you as a king on this earth to go into that place of darkness and to bring the light, to bring the authority, to bring the rule, to bring the reign and to bring the dominion of God to that territory That already belongs to God because the earth is the Lord's and everything within it. That's how we implement God's dominion on this earth. That's how kingdom is manifested through us. It's manifested through us as we go and we confront these dark places and we bring the light to them. We bring the answers to them. We bring righteousness to them. We bring God's heart to a dark situation. It could be people who are called into places of government to change a nation and turn it back towards righteousness. It could be the movie industry, which is so dark, to go in and to bring light and change the way the movie industry functions. It could be the medical industry. We know there's a lot of darkness there. Well, who's going to be the king that goes in there and starts implementing God's dominion upon his domain? 
It could be in your families. You have the right to go in and change the dynamics of your family. It could be the job that you go to every day. It could be the business that you have. Whatever it may be, if it's on this earth, you have the authority to go in as a king and implement God's dominion upon his territory and drive out the darkness. Again, we have been given the entire earth. It is our inheritance. And we've been given all power and all authority. And we've been made kings by King Jesus to implement God's righteous dominion in any and everything we encounter. If you find our podcast interesting, please consider sharing. For resources, media, and to learn how you can visit our weekly gatherings in Tulsa, Oklahoma, visit our website, breakawaykingdomhub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Rumble, and YouTube at Kings and Priests Podcast. And you can contact us through email, kingspriestpodcast at gmail.com.